Hi, just a quick intro to the food for today. Um, I think people are a little surprised that I'm not coming up with new recipes every day, but I'm showing you how I eat, which is very different than giving you recipes. You'll notice I only give recipes every so often because once in a great while I come up with something new and I've tested it and it's come out good. Um, but generally, how I this is how I eat every day. I eat potatoes, I eat vegetables. I eat potatoes, I eat vegetables. And that's the way I feel the best. And here's my lunch. I liked breakfast so much, I made it again. So more hash brown potatoes, and I've got broccoli and kale to go with that. And it's, I don't know if I can eat all that, but I'll do, I'll probably eat half of that. So now, in terms of our lesson for today, I wanted to finish going through my, my little card, my prayer card, in terms of the types of things that I'm praying about and I, I'm going to pick up where we left off. The next area that I pray about, which might sound goofy, is I, but I pray about the climate. You know, there's a, a lot going on with the climate change. And God left us in charge of this world, not just to physically to take care of it, but to spiritually take care of it. And if you have any questions or doubts about that, here's the scriptures that I use to support how I'm praying, and it's uh, John 14, 12. When Jesus was saying, he said, Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. So Jesus expected us to be able to do more, bigger. There's a, a lot of different ways to look at the word greater. Uh, greater can be more in volume, and greater can also be um, just more impactful okay and we know that jesus controlled the the waters he controlled the land he controlled he, he stopped several storms he stopped the seas from being choppy things like that and so we can do even greater than that because he's gone to the father and we have his holy spirit now empowering us and then another verse that goes along with everything that we're praying this is Matthew 16, 19. And Jesus says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He gives us the keys to heaven, which means we have the keys to his lordship in our life, his kingship. Okay, a kingdom has a king. Jesus is king. We have the keys to his kingship in our lives, in our, our world around us, how to bring his authority and kingship. Have you ever seen a movie where... Uh, well, it could be like an old Wild West movie where there's the sheriff and he deputizes some people and they go riding out in their horses to catch a bad guy and they say, stop in the name of the law. Okay, they have that authority behind them. They aren't the actual sheriff, but the sheriff has made them able to do what he does for him. That's that's who we are. We're We're God's deputies to go out. In, in the name of Jesus, and do his work, okay? So he says, here's the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's our keys to the kingdom. That's what opens the door to us living under his kingship. And I know it's hard to understand. There's We hear different explanations of loosing and binding, However, and I know I've talked about this before, but not everybody's heard these things. If you look in the Old Testament and they talk about binding, they're always binding scriptures to their hands or binding things to their heart. They're binding things to their head. In other words, they want it to be with them. They want the scripture to be in their thoughts. They want the scriptures to be in their heart. They want the scriptures to be in their hands, in their actions, okay? They're to be joined. When they're bound, they're joined. It's like when you're bound in marriage, okay? Or you have a binding law. You have to come under its authority. That's what he meant by binding. Not by, you know, tying up and you can't get loose. It's not, it's a little different way of looking. It's, it's joining a person to something. So when we bind, we want to bind situations to the truth of God what he says, and we want to loose them. We want to release the stuff we don't want. Jesus cast out demons. He loosed them and got rid of them. He wasn't binding them to the person. He wasn't binding them 
this way either. You know, he, he didn't verbally tie up any demons. He always made them leave. He cast them out and loosed them. Loose that woman. Loose. Let go. So we have that authority to do bigger things than sitting around watching the world crumble around us, okay? That's the enemy, and we can fight him. The, the, the parable of the field, where there's the, the wheat and the tares are growing in the field, and the implication is that the wheat is um, God's kingdom, and the tares are the evil one within. And they say, well, shouldn't we get rid of the evil here? And, and he said, no, let it mature. But the, the key here is that the kingdom is maturing at the same time. The wheat will be ready at the same time as the tares, but the tares will stand out and they'll be gotten rid of when the harvest is uh, brought in. So we are maturing at the same time and we can fight this battle. Okay, so we can overcome evil. So when I pray for the climate, I start out by, oh, let me see, do I have my climate prayer? I didn't think I was going to do that. Yes, here it is. And, um, and I've been praying this for over a year now. But anyhow, um, to stop all calamity of weather and climate over the northeastern United States, the eastern coastal regions, the mid-Atlantic states, Canada. And when all the fires were going on, I started praying for California and the West Coast. And I also was praying for Australia. And I still am. I'm still praying for those areas. And I've heard that all the fires in Australia have been uh, stopped. Anyhow, you shall not form, and I'm talking to the, cal to the uh, calamity of weather and climate. I say, you shall not form. You shall not curse. You shall not progress. You shall obey and come under the kingship of Jesus Christ, whose authority I have to command you in his name. You shall bless the Lord, the land, the waters, the flora, the fauna, and the people. And that's that's how I, and I make a point. I stand up, I face out the window, and I'm talking to it, and I'm telling it where to go and where to get off because... It's, it's not in accordance with God, you know? He, the, the, no. <laughs> These things need to come under authority. So we can play. Ask the Lord to show you what it is he wants you to pray about. This was something he made known to me through a dream. And it was a very frightening dream. And it, it would not let go of me for days. I was... In fact, it was more it was weeks. I was very frightened after I had that dream because I didn't know what it meant. And finally, I was able to pray about it and understand that I could come against what was causing the fear in that dream, and it had to do with the climate. So, and ever since I've prayed that, ever since I started praying it, I don't have the fear is gone, the dreams are gone, all that stuff is gone because of the authority God has given us to take over that. So that's how I prayed about the climate. And now I've had another dream now that God wants me to address something else. And I think it has to do, I think it has to do with the government, but I haven't got it all sifted out yet as to what he wants me to pray. That that takes a little time and discernment for him to, for me to be able to discern what he's trying to tell me. Um, you know, <laughs> it just is. It's not like he and I have a telephone, you know, I, it's, I get in the way. I'm sure he's telling me loud and clear, and I just, I don't slow down enough to listen to him. So, but I've got something else I have to be working on with that. And then, and you know what? And I'm not going to tell you what to pray about. I can tell you how to pray, but I can't tell you what to pray. That's between you and God. And it's very interesting. I I'll, I haven't seen it, but I remember seeing something in scripture. It was in the New Testament, and it was in one of the one of Paul's letters, I think. And it was very interesting because there was a place where there where he was saying that different people pray about things differently, that this, there's different, it's almost like people were praying the opposite and that was okay. That God uses our prayers on both sides of the fence. You know, these people could be praying for a situation and these people could be praying against a situation and God will use both parts of those prayers for the best 
you know he'll use he'll use the best parts of those prayers um but it's important for each one of us to go before the lord and ask the lord in the prayer it's a prayer before the prayer ask him what would you have me pray and just listen and wait and if you listen and wait for a little bit and you don't get any nothing comes to mind or you know you're not prompted then trust that he will show you. Just because he doesn't show you right at that minute doesn't mean he's not going to show you. You just need to be patient and say, okay, Lord, I trust you will show me what you want me to pray about. And then believe him. And then he'll show you. He'll show you just, you know, sometimes it, it takes a little time for us to be open to hearing what it is that he wants to tell us. It's not always in line with what we want. <laughs> sometimes it, it usually is, but if it's not, it sometimes it's a little harder for us to, to hear. So anyhow, that's that's me praying for the climate and and whatever else God lays on your heart, okay? That we have this authority to do more, even more than what Jesus did. And then I have a, um, oh, and another thing I do is I make sure I'm rooted and grounded in God's love. That has been really good. And that's that's a new thing for me to realize that I need to do that every day. Um if we root and ground ourselves every day, especially in the morning, before you go out and meet the world, you know, re root and ground. By that, what I mean by rooting and grounding yourself is really feeling secure in God's love for you and allowing yourself to be filled with his love. And, and you will be secure in his love. And then that way, no matter what the world dishes out at you that day, you are equipped, better equipped to handle it because you don't need that person's acceptance. You don't need that person's love. You don't need that person's whatever. You know, because you I ha having God's love is enough for you. That is enough for you. So um, there was... Here it is, back, back in July of 2018. I still have the card here, and this is one I've got to put in my, uh, I want to include in my prayer time. I've been using something else, but I want to use this too. As I said, I wrote down, I asked the Lord what he had to say to me. And he said, my love for you is deeper and wider than the ocean. And then he showed me in my mind's eye, the vastness of the oceans. I mean, and they're just huge. When you, if you've had an opportunity to go out on, like on a ship or on a boat or even on the seashore, you can just see the oceans just go and go and go and go. And they're so deep. And he's saying, my love for you is vaster than that. And, he, and then he said, my love for you is greater than the heavens. And then he showed me the depths of space and how that just goes and goes and goes and goes. And he said, my love for you is intimate and personal. And then he took hold of me and kissed me on the lips and looked into my eyes. And it was hard to take, yet I wanted it so badly. And I wanted to believe it. And then he kissed me again, but this time on the forehead. And he held me against his chest. When he had first kissed me, it was as his wife. And the next time it was as his child. And he says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. My love has never failed for you. I have loved you since the beginning. And you know, that's not just for me. That's for you too. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave us Jesus. So that's the same love he has for you, that he has for me, that he has for everyone. And if we get ourselves rooted in that love in the morning, we are well equipped to share that love with others during the day, whether it's through forgiveness or patience or charity, any of those things, okay? And then I pray for enemies. I do a prayer for them, and we are told to pray for our enemies. And I need to wrap this up because I'm going to not have enough time for this video. So I'm going to scoot and we will... Uh, have another, we'll be talking about some other stuff tomorrow and more about prayer. Okay. All right. Have a good night.